time and money that's wasted on translating pure dead weight economic law it benefits no one and it harms millions of of course while you are leaders in this effort you are not the first mavericks Congress to take up the battle for clearly written legal rules in fact, the very first reported appearance of the word gobbledygook was in 1944 when it was coined by a congressman. His name was Maverick. <laughs> U.S. Representative Maury Maverick was a Texas Democrat who wrote a memo that banned all gobbledygook language from his office. He said he made up the word to imitate the noise that a turkey makes. Show just how serious he was about plain English, he added in his memo, anyone using the words activation or implementation will be shot. <laughs> At the SEC, we have more modest penalties in store, both for our staff and for public offenders, but we are dead serious about plain English. That's because it's our job to be the investor's advocate. Investors deserve concise and clearly written rules that help them to quickly focus on what's important in making financial decisions. Using plain English respects the fact that investors are busy people and it lets them use their time more productively. Clearly presented information also makes our markets more efficient by improving the process of price discovery on our securities exchanges. The SEC has many plain language initiatives underway. Our plain English requirements now apply to both offering documents and periodic reporting by public companies. They apply to mutual fund disclosure and they apply to our own communications to the public. It is a sad truth that our government's laws and rules are not only mostly written by lawyers, but seemingly they are mostly written for the benefit of lawyers. This makes compliance with the laws more expensive because people who have to follow the laws and the rules need to hire lawyers to find out what they mean. But legalese does more than just waste time and money. When laws and rules are hard to understand, it's more likely that people who are trying to comply are simply unable to do so. There is nowhere that certainty in the law is more important than in small business. Every day, small business men and women across the country execute make or break business decisions, tough competitive circumstances that depend upon knowing what the legal rules are. The small business people who are working hard each day to create the goods and services that their community and need to know how to navigate in a sea of regulation, and we owe it to them to provide a clear answer. At the SEC, we are taking plain English to the next level. In addition to using plain language in our writing, we're directly helping people to understand the rules and the laws that we administer. As one part of this effort, we have published the SEC's Plain English Handbook, and we are reaching out to small businesses, to investors, and to anyone who wants help with understanding the laws that we administer and our rules. One place that we're doing this is in one of the fastest growing segments of the securities industry, the investment advisory industry. In the past three years, almost 4,000 new advisors, most of them small businesses, have registered with the SEC for the first time. Our experience has shown that these newly registered firms may not be familiar with what's required of them under the Investment Advisors Act. So last summer, we translated the Investment Advisors Act into plain English, and we emailed it to all of the investment advisors. We also keep it up on our public website. One of the best features of this new plain English translation of the law is that each plain English description is hyperlinked to the actual law text, so it's easy to click back and forth and understand what a particular provision of the law means. We're also working hard to ensure that the materials that publicly registered companies provide to investors are readable and understandable. We have some empirical evidence of the fact that most retail investors are throwing away the proxy statements, the 10Ks, and the other SEC-mandated disclosure documents that they receive in the mail. Your customers routinely throw your product away. Problem. There can be many reasons that our customers are dissatisfied, but the most obvious is that they are busy people. Wading through dense legalese is not their day job, and ordinarily they just don't have time for it. If time is money, then poorly written disclosure documents 
are wasting one of the investor's most important assets. At the SEC, we've noticed that public companies take a great deal of care in sprucing up their catalogs and their sales materials so that customers will be interested in buying their products. Doesn't it make sense that they, and we the government, should take the same degree of care in making investor materials more readable? Our plain English efforts are focused on areas where consumers have the most to gain. So for retail investors, including many small businesses, that means mutual funds, where nearly half of more than $3 trillion that Americans have invested in 401ks and similar plans is invested. Just a few months ago, the Commission proposed rule changes to make mutual fund disclosures easier to understand. Under this proposal, every mutual fund would include key information in plain English in the front of the mutual fund prospectus. That will make reading a mutual fund prospectus far easier than it is today. Yet another example of how we're using plain English to help individuals and small business is our proposed new rules that require investment advisors to give clients a brochure in plain English. It would offer investors clearly presented information about the investment advisor's business practices, conflicts of interest, and disciplinary history. One further area where we're working to promote clarity is our new executive compensation disclosure regime. The Commission recently enacted new rules aimed at letting investors see clearly how the executives who work for them are paid, and the new rules explicitly require that the narrative be written in plain English. Mr. Chairman, these are just some of the many ways that the SEC is working to promote plain English to make life better for investors, for companies large and small, and for our markets. But I also want to congratulate you and this subcommittee for your focus on the importance of plain language across the entire government. And in particular, I appreciate your interest in legislation such as H.R. 3548, the Plain Language and Government Communications Act of 2007, which, of course, was authored by you, Chairman Braley. As you know, there are similar efforts underway in the Senate, led by Senator Akaka, who has introduced S-2291. I'm certain that small business would welcome a law that establishes plain language as the standard style of communication for federal documents issued to the public. It is heartening that the House bill, as you have mentioned, has already unanimously been approved by the House Oversight and Government Reform Subcommittee on Information Policy Census and National Archives. Your bill, Mr. Chairman, would require the use of plain language in any new or revised document issued by a federal agency and that is certainly a good start. I note that it would cover any documents that explain how to obtain a benefit or service, including letters, forms, notices, and instructions. The next step, of course, would be to include regulations. I'm certain that there are reasons for that modesty in the bill's objective, but I encourage the members of this committee to aggressively pursue the goal of plain language and regulations as well. I have been fighting for this at the SEC. But as you may see from our most recent proposed rules, legalese in rule text remains alive and well even at our agency. Finally, I'd point out that the key to achieving real change in increasing the use of plain language is the adoption of objective standards for measuring whether government writing is in fact understandable. Fortunately, there's useful experience in the states that can guide us in doing this. 35 states have already enacted plain language laws, and you mentioned that Iowa has such a law for jury instructions. Many of these laws have been quite successful in eliminating gobbledygook from consumer sales documents and insurance contracts. For example, Pennsylvania's Plain Language Consumer Contract Act includes specific tests of what plain language is and penalties for noncompliance. But Pennsylvania's admirable law also shows the need for federal action because it excludes language intended to comply with federal requirements. Of course, readability tests are only a rough guide. These simple yardsticks are only a rough estimate of clear writing. On the other hand, we're talking about laws, regulations, government documents, and investor communications. It's not supposed to be Hemingway. So if we lose the capacity for poetry in the process of keeping things clear and understandable, that's a price that we should happily pay. But far better than any mathematical formula for measuring readability is testing a document on real people. That's why the SEC is planning to measure the efforts, or pardon me, measure the effects of our efforts by talking to real investors. We'll soon conduct a baseline survey of America's investors to find out whether they find proxy statements, 10-Ks, and other SEC-required disclosure documents to be readable and useful, and if not, 
Why not? The survey will also gather ideas on what would make these documents more useful. Mr. Chairman, the attention that you and your fellow committee members are paying to this important subject is long overdue. Eliminating waste in government is an objective that everyone shares in theory, but it always seems difficult to find good opportunities. Here is an outstanding opportunity to achieve enormous savings for both small businesses and consumers without any countervailing loss of government interest. In fact, the government interest is advanced as well by eliminating legalese and government writing because when it's easier to understand the rules, more people will follow them. Thank you for inviting me to testify, and I'm happy to...